there's an entire what literature, psychoanalytic literature, on the dangers of overcompassion, hyperprotectiveness, helicopter parenting, all of that. When you have children, you have to encourage them. You have to encourage them to take risks because they have to grow up and take their place in the world. You can't protect them too much because if you do, you destroy them. That's the motif of Hansel and Gretel, right? Two kids lost in the woods. They find the gingerbread house. That's a little bit too good to be true, right? It's not only shelter when you need it, but it's candy. What lives inside the house that's too good to be true? The witch that devours you, right? That's excess compassion. So you don't want your mother to do everything for you. That's for sure. There's a rule if you're dealing with the elderly and like extended care homes, don't do anything for your clients that they can do themselves because you undermine their autonomy. And so there's a certain amount of harshness that goes along with that, just as there is if you're a good mother because you have to separate yourself from your child and allow them to make hurtful mistakes, right? I mean, it's, it's very difficult if you're a compassionate person to stand back far enough to let your children take necessary risks. But one thing I'm not getting, there's a big difference between letting people do something for themselves and saying men should be dangerous. By dangerous, that implies I should be ready to threaten someone, to hurt somebody. No, you should be capable of it. But that doesn't mean you should use it. There's nothing to you otherwise. Like if you're not a formidable force, there's, not, there's no morality in your self-control. If you're incapable of violence, not being violent isn't a virtue. People who teach martial arts know this full well, right? If you learn a martial art, you learn to be dangerous, but simultaneously you learn to control it. Both of those come together. And the combination of that capacity for danger and the capacity for control is what brings about the virtue. Otherwise, you confuse weakness with, with moral virtue. I'm harmless, therefore I'm good. It's like, no, that isn't how it works. That isn't how it works at all. If you're harmless, you're just weak. And if you're weak, you're not going to be good. You can't be, because it takes strength to be good. It's very difficult to be good.